Hi, and welcome to the show. You're watching In the Studio, and I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. The program is brought to you by Davis Media Access and is broadcast on Davis Community Television. That's Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T UVerse 99. We're also online at dctv.davismedia.org, so log on and enjoy all of our other uh, TV programs. Today's topic is a new art exhibit uh, organized or shown by the Davis Art Center, and it's called Momentum in Action, uh, Momentum, sorry, Art in Action and Creativity in Motion. And it's the second show, uh, they've had one last year as well, and it runs through September 13th. And here to talk about it are two very special guests. I have uh, Shelley Gilbride, special project with the Davis Art uh, um, Center, and Rachel Hartso. Uh, who is the artist and the creator of the show. Welcome both, uh, uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, so I'm Sarah. going to start with Rachel, if I may, and, um, <clears throat> and I'm going to ask her, what uh, has been your role in creating uh, the art exhibit? I, I believe that you are the designer, the creator, the inspiration, the <laughs> motivator, just about everything. <laughs> Could you tell us a little more about what uh, brought you uh, to create this show? Sure, sure. And thank you. We wanted to thank you for having us on the show today and for promoting our program in this manner. Um, so the, um, the, the program Discovery Art, um, which is what we named this, started last year and the Davis Art Center received a grant from the Irvine Foundation to kind of do some strategic development, look at their long-term plan in our community, and um, one of the pieces that we developed out of that was to put together this program which we named the Discovery Art Program, and it was meant to be something where um, intergenerational groups of people, so children and their parents, parents and their friends, friends and their neighbors, grandparents, grandchildren, different groups of people could come together and experience art kind of in not necessarily the conventional ways that they had in the past with the Art Center. So the Art Center has a really fabulous tradition, which we still do, of um, teaching a variety of camps and art classes for um, people of all ages, toddlers up through seniors. And this, um, we wanted to try to investigate how we could have sort of more spontaneous, short-term things where you didn't have to commit necessarily to like a month and a half of programming or two months of programming where you could just come in on a Saturday for a few hours or just come in in the afternoon for a few hours. And so we investigated using the exhibit as sort of a hands-on center and we um, launched that program last summer with the show called Cross Pollination and then this summer we have Momentum. And the, um, the exhibit is kind of the anchor for the program but then we also have different programs out in the community. Um, for this particular show we're partnering with the Arboretum, the UC Davis Arboretum which we also did last year and the Peregrine School and a few other wonderful partners in our community. And um, so I kind of helped the Art Center develop that from putting the partnerships together to designing what was going to go in the show and how the pieces of that show were going to work to engage the community. And I should say one of the very important pieces of the exhibit is that it's not a traditional exhibit where you walk in and look at the artwork on the wall, but all of the different elements in the exhibit are meant to be pieces that the community actually interacts with and helps to build and develop during the course of the show. So we had a we had our opening, which is sort of traditional for an art show, but actually the big thing for the show will be the closing, which will be on September 13th, and that will be when the, all of the artwork will actually be completed. So we kind of started the artwork at the beginning of the show, and then you'll be able to see the completed, finished artwork at the end. Can you give me an example of uh, how the public would interact? Uh, one particular mural, for example, and one particular uh, uh, Crea creation. Sure, sure. So we have, um, there are actually five different pieces in the exhibit, um, and I won't go right now into each one of them. Oh, but, please. But please do, <laughs> you want all of them? them? Yeah, well, it doesn't okay. matter. If you'd like to. Sure. Yes. Yes. So we have, um, we have something called Nuts and Bolts, and that is a piece that you'll see um, if you come to the Art Center, and it has, it's one long wall, and it's covered with um, images of different things that represent the idea of momentum. 
And for that piece, we kind of reached out into the community and invited anybody that wanted to to submit images. And it ranges from people surfing to civil rights marches to yo-yos, bicycling, skateboarding, um, yoga, pictures of nature. Um, there's just, we have hundreds of images up and also some like examples of poetry that people have written and one great description I found on the table this morning of somebody's description that they, um, that they illustrated of kind of how momentum works within society, culturally, socially. Um, and the idea of that is that it just creates kind of a, an image map of our community, like a collection of, of our ideas together of what momentum means and then that is used as the basis of inspiration for another piece in the, in the exhibit, which is called Moving Parts. And Moving Parts is a mural. We have four artists working on it. And that mural, we've drawn inspiration from some of the images in the nuts and bolts um, installation. So that's, that's one example. Um, that's where people are submitting ideas. Then we have some other pieces that are based more on actually people physically doing art within the context of the exhibit. So we have, um, we have a piece called Off the Grid, and um, it is a repeat of a project that we did last year, but with a different theme this year, which was really successful, and we had a waiting list for people to participate in it and do as well now. So it is, we take um, a really high resolution photograph, which is a surprise. We haven't released what the photo is yet, so you have to wait till the end of the show to see it. And we grid it into 132 sections and create a kit with, um, with each of those sections. So anybody in the community is invited to come in and check out a kit and the kit you take home with you, it has, um, it has one section of this color image and it has instructions and a sheet of paper. And you take that home, it's numbered, and it corresponds back to a section of this giant grid that's on the wall. And so when you complete it, you bring it back in and it gets put back up on the wall. And then slowly over the course of the summer, as more and more of these grids come back in, we start to be able to see what the image is. And it's, and it's just starting now to, um, to kind of materialize on the wall. So it's fun if you go in there, you can start to get an idea of what it is. But it's nice because as people come back throughout the summer, they can kind of, you know, each time see a little bit more of this, of this image coming into focus and kind of guess what it is. And it's actually fun to see people coming into the gallery. We have um, a lot of kids that are there doing camps throughout the summer. And it's fun to see the kids coming back in every day or every week and seeing what the progress on the mural is or seeing what the progress on the grid is. Um, so that's one way that people can very directly become part of the Relate and debate of the uh, artists. The, yes, well, this is fascinating. And to, to some extent, it, uh, it uh, exemplifies uh, this concept of movement and motion and uh, creativity. Uh, which seems to be the uh, the, the highlight of, uh, or the theme rather, of this exhibit. Uh, for example, uh, you, um, in your press release, you, you say, well, see what happens, I'm paraphrasing, see what happens when art and science um, uh, come together and the reality or the physics uh, concept or reality of motion uh, is translated into into art and it seems to me that off the grid is one example because it's it it, it will move and evolve into something different mm -hmm. yes which which is great i was uh, when i saw the the the, um, the the exhibit i was uh, i was curious about the off the grid and you've explained it uh, very nicely um i also um uh, there are a couple of other m murals. I think that there was one particular one that uh, you were uh, uh, telling me about, and that is the uh, moving parts. Yes, so um, Rachel um, started talking about the m moving parts mural, which is a large scale mural that actually four artists are working on. Rachel is one of them. Yes. Um, <laughs> working on the mural, but um, they're Mark Rivera. Camille Shea Lichter, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, and Margo Mullen um, and Rachel Hartzell are all creating this mural and they've done it in relay. So at the opening ceremony, Mark came in and did this beautiful blue wash on this large scale. It's three uh, canvas panels. Yes, yes. He came in and did a blue wash on this 
on this panel and it's a really beautiful blue kind of evokes the sea or the sky yes. um, and it's actually dripping down so you see the movement of this yes. blue and then next uh, I think Margot came in and uh, added on to the mural yes and then so it's adding each artist is contributing to the mural and then at one point I think it became clear as the artists were working that there was a theme happening and they all got together mm. and, uh, and discussed what this was going to be and now it's it's just turned into this gorgeous ski sea skyscape um, that's Let's really take a quite look beautiful. At it. That'd be great. Yeah. We have a, a, a B-roll or a video of the exhibit, and uh, uh, <coughs> le let's take a look and see what it looks like. And feel free to please comment. So these are scenes as you're entering into the gallery. That's not simple. That's right. That's just a, a visual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there you have the artists actually working on the mural. This is the nuts and bolts wall that Rachel was talking about. And this is Tiva Lassiter, who is our program manager. And she is actually putting some of the panels up on the wall for off the grid. Those are the sections I was referring to. And you can see it's kind of filling in that space. This is Camille, who's one of our mural artists, painting a dragonfly. And this fly. is a beautiful blue. Mm -hmm. um, you can see those drips coming down that Shelley was talking yes, about. Yes, I do, yes. And I think one of the things that it's interesting about the entire program is that we're looking at intergenerational participation and also professional artists, amateur artists, artists in the community. And this mural is really for <coughs> professionals who work in very different styles coming together to collaborate on this mural. And that's one of the key features is this collaborative um, spirit um, that Discovery Art is really fostering and that anybody in the community can come and watch these artists at work um, and see how they're creating uh, this, this beautiful piece. So there again the motion, uh, the theme of the motion uh, and uh, the evolution and the changes. Right. Uh, uh, this is very beautiful, mm -hmm. yes, and I can see that a, a, a small kid there, a child yeah. uh, contributing and uh, yeah. So we, all, we have all of these, uh, there's free play areas um, where kids can explore momentum and be in the gallery and they can play while artists are working. Um, this is a spirograph that um, is the UC Davis Physics Club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They loan this to us, and this has been by far one of the most favorite activities yes. well, of the year. It, it we is. have children lined up with paper every day yes. waiting to do this, and, yes. um, and it's a great way. We, the whole, we really wanted to explore kind of the physics of motion in this exhibit, and not just take things that were typically within a physics context, but really think about how you make art with those. And so yes. the spirograph lent itself, this is such a perfect segue. The kinetic playground, which is this wall with these bicycle wheels, um, they actually, you can't tell from this, but they have little compass um, pencil holders on them and you put a pen in it and then you spin it. And so the idea is that as these wheels move, they create a mark of the, the movement that you're making and actually leave like an artist's mark on the wall. And that over the course of the two months, while the show is up, it will capture all of those experiences that users have had in the gallery space during that time. Um, and so we'll leave this, it will create a piece of art on the wall. Well, uh, the, um, the bikes are uh, prominent in your exhibit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering, of course, uh, they exemplify motion. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'd like you to tell me, beyond a means of transport, what do they represent to you in terms of science as well as art? So, um, well, <laughs> my other job, <laughs> I run a bicycle pedestrian driver safety program um, for the city of Davis. Oh, so as you know, the yes. bicycle is our city logo. It's a very important part of our culture and our city and who define, what defines us and our community. And, um, and it is also a growing part of a national, international dialogue about um, steps that we can take to make Minimize, our planet and yes. our communities healthier. So yes, it is a means of transportation and um, it, is, you know, it, is, it is something that a lot of people use as transportation in Davis. It's also something that um, you know, it keeps people more physically fit when they ride bikes and it helps us make our air quality of better. higher, yes. better nature. And 
It um, eliminates cars because every person that rides a bike is ostensibly not going to be in a car or they could be walking. Um, but there are many reasons why biking is important and so we wanted to not bang people over the head with that but sort of use that as an example with this show. We could have used there are a lot of different things we could have picked kind of as a theme to promote, but biking seemed to make the most sense. Um, Indeed, and it's so fun. Nice. Yes. And it's fun. And so we really wanted people to think about bikes um, mm -hmm. as something fun and something beautiful. And so it's not just something that you hop mm -hmm. on and, <laughs> and like well, go to work with. Bikes are beautiful and uh, the various colors and uh, the type of bike and the wheels especially have always been a fascination yeah. uh, to a lot of people especially children and so that's very good one thing that uh, I'd like to ask you uh, both of you is uh, um, something that I've been thinking about it for quite a while is creativity more important in art or in science and how can you define creativity um, is it uh, a first step, wow. a second step, <laughs> is it? Well, uh, let, me, um, uh, let me share what I've been thinking, and that is, um, to me, curiosity is the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. And then from curiosity, we go to some type of intuition, and from there, perhaps some creative uh, thing happen. Um, so is this to you more important in art to produce something beautiful or do you see science as a, as also the result of creative thinking? Very much so. Um, I mean we are certainly not trying to say that one is more important than the other. I think that what we're trying to say is that they need to work in tandem with each other to both be effective. I mean if you look at art Art is about color, it's about form and shape and things that all are very much rooted in science and physicality. And then um, if you look at science, you can teach kind of the basics of science, but if you don't teach somebody actually how to think creatively, you're not necessarily going to generate a very strong scientist. And so um, this is also where the Davis Art Center has kind of entered into an interesting dialogue that's happening nationally right now with um, curriculum. where. There's a kind of growing movement called STEM, and it's an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, yes. Engineering, and Mathematics. And there has been a movement to change that to STEAM, adding the A in for art, um, because a number of pretty big entities are recognizing, corporations, universities, are recognizing the fact that without having that creative training um, and, ap and kind of access to art as, as children within an education context, that the um, the skills needed to really think creatively within a science context are not as full as they could be. And so um, we're participating in that. We feel like it's very important. And it's also the way that young children learn is through play. And if you look at the way that science and art are kind of taught to like preschoolers, it's just about playing and exploring your physical world. And they're kind of one and the same. And so mm -hmm. this just gives an opportunity, I think, to like children of all ages to experience that just experimentation, whether you want to call it art or call it science, it's all sort of the same, one and the same, I think. Do you have anything to? No, I think that was very well said, <laughs> but I think that the- Very much so. I think that creativity is related to critical thinking. Yes. Um, and that if you're, and that something that sparks your imagination is very important. And so whether science sparks your imagination or art sparks your imagination to think critically about something and think creatively um, to solve a problem. That they're all part of how we experience our world. And so I think the initiative to include art and design in STEM curriculum is to say that if art sparks creat critical thinking skills, mm -hmm. just like math can spark critical thinking skills, that they're all part of the same skill set. And we need to make sure that art and color and aesthetics and um, you know playing with hands-on things are included in curriculum development um, and just in in kind of the, the the things that that are so vital to be human and to enjoy and to make life good and mm -hmm. and and real so um, so yeah mm -hmm. we're we're very much ourselves and the art center as a proponent proponent of steam curriculum Color seems to be uh, 
another theme of yeah. your uh, uh, of your art exhibit, uh, momentum um, uh, art in motion. Um, did, did you uh, plan uh, the colors? I mean, by having the right color paint or the <laughs> the, the the selective uh, photographs or anything? Did, yeah, did very you? much so. Yeah, well, <laughs> Rachel created the initial um, logo for ex this exhibit is a bicycle wheel with um, the color spectrum inside the paint color spectrum. The rainbow. She, the rainbow, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. And she created that on her own. You created that on it's your a, own It's bike. on my bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> I actually saw a picture of it on the internet, and I. but you can't just use somebody's picture, and we needed a better quality one, so I thought, okay, we'll just make our own. And then um, what happened was I started driving it around Davis, and then just all these random people would kind of stop and wave and say, oh, I like your wheel. <laughs> and it made me think, oh, wow, that's not, you know, it's a pretty small effort, but then yeah. look at what it does. As far yeah. as what Shelley's talking about, art impacting our quality of life, um, you know, we can do these little things and, and, and kind of a little subversive part of this exhibit also is to get people to think about art in Davis and how yeah. we kind of define our community through the way that we celebrate creativity, whether that's through putting a painting on your garage door, which a friend of mine has done, or whether it's helping support public art um, in different contexts, or whether it is just having your kids take art classes. There are so many different ways, whether it's yarn bombing something at the co-op. I mean, there's like, there are all these different things and they all kind of add this little spark of magic right. into our community. And so I think it's also about um, just having the community think about that and think about what we want our community to celebrate. Yes. And I think that goes back to the bike, um, all the bike imagery in the exhibit. It's not just about this explosion of art and science, but it's about really thinking about the things that are important to our community mm -hmm. and um, making sure that those things are represented in the exhibit. And bikes are so important to Davis. I'm putting them in a new context and making people think about them differently. Or um, one of the things that Rachel was um, really uh, clear about in the beginning is that movement and momentum isn't just about science and art, it's also about social movement. Mm -hmm. And part of this is to, um, when people see Rachel on her bike and say hi, it's about creating connection within our community and making our community even better than it is um, through art. And bringing people together Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. to, uh, to do artistic things together yes. and to uh, to think uh, as a community, and I and I think mm -hmm. the multi generational um, aspect of it is is beautiful uh, because uh, we do tend to to segregate ourselves into little groups, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. by age or by um, <clears throat> by taste or mm -hmm. by specialty. And art and science are universal, and as a matter of fact, uh, they bring not just communities together, but uh, 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 worlds together, you know, nations together. And I think that's uh, uh, um, what you are doing here is a microcosm of what actually happens already in the world. Yeah. Now, the question I have is the um, exhibit opened uh, mid-July. Mid mm -hmm. uh, you had your inauguration, mm -hmm. uh, inauguration or vernissage or whatever you want to call <laughs> it. Sounds fancy. And uh, uh, how, uh, how has it been received? What, what has been the, the feedback that you've had? It's, it's been fantastic. We've had, um, we have to spend hours cleaning up that central area every day because kids come in and with their parents or with their grandparents and just go nuts in yeah. there. Um, yeah. We've we've had really nice positive feedback, and we've had a lot of people participating in it, and a lot of people visiting, and um, and at a time of the summer when I would have expected that things would kind of wind down a little because we're getting ready to go back to school, we've actually seen more people coming mm -hmm. in. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, we can. I'd like to promote an event we have coming up. Absolutely. If we have time to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Go ahead, please. So um, on September 8th, we have an event at the UC Davis Arboretum, who has been one of our fabulous partners. It's called the um, Design and Launch Flight Derby. Is that right? Yes, that is. Yeah. <laughs> Design, Design and, and Launch, launch Flight, flight Derby. Flight Derby. That, yeah. so <laughs> that calls for an explanation. So we have a fabulous <laughs> group of um, partners, many partners from campus, from bee biology, entomology, wildlife, the Arboretum, ornithology, um, 
And we'll have all kinds of fun activities looking at the design and shapes of seeds in nature and how that propels them to move and looking at birds and flight and bees in flight and other things that fly in gardens mm -hmm. and outdoors. Um, and then we're going to actually have a flight derby so people can come and build things that fly, whether it's a seed or some kind of flying machine, and then we're going to go out on the lawn and test them out. So that will be at the gazebo. Um, there's more Gosh, information that about that. wonderful. Yeah, and this fun. is September 8th, and yeah. do you know what the location is? It is at the gazebo at the UC at Davis the Arboretum. You just mm -hmm. mentioned that, yeah, actually. Yeah. Time yeah. And I think it's 11 to, to 1, one yeah. but it's on our website. Yeah, um, yeah. and the website is uh, art. Center. It's Davis. Dot. It's www.davisartcenter.org. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, this is um, uh, this is an incredible event, and of course, um, this is a free uh, exhibit, yes. mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, anyway, and could you tell us the hours where when you're open? I think the, it's between the ten Davis and Davis Art seven? Center is open um, on weekdays from ten to seven, and mm -hmm. any time that the art center is open, the gallery is open. And on I think on Friday we close at five, um, unless there's an event in the evening. And on Saturday we're also open from ten to four, um, so we have pretty broad hours. Mm -hmm. And and on September 13th is our closing celebration. September 13th, 13th which it's is your a Friday, closing, which would be the unveiling right. of mm -hmm. the off the grid. Yes, and absolutely. What would it be? <laughs> I can't wait. You'll have to come find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that well, that should be a fun event, so we welcome anybody to join us that evening. And yeah. um, and of course, all that information is on your website, yes. Yes. Oh, which mm -hmm. is perfect. Well, um, I am delighted to have learned so much more about the exhibit and to have had you here. I'm afraid we're out of time, so we need to wrap it up. But thank you again for um, coming uh, to join us uh, today and to being such an inspiration for the community. Uh, so Shelley Gilbride, uh, the special projects at uh, <laughs> Davis, <laughs> Davis <Yeah>. Art Center <laughs> and uh, uh, Rachel Hartsoe, the artist extraordinaire and <laughs> creator of uh, this wonderful exhibit. And thank you all of you for watching. Uh, you've been watching in the studio and uh, you can actually uh, stream uh, this uh, episode again and watch it again on our website at dctv.org. Uh, sorry, dctv.davismedia.org. And while you're there, you can also check out some of our uh, other very enjoyable program. Thank you so much again for watching. I'm your host, Lynn Weaver. See you next time.